Thank you. The witness, people were sent to external training on when they would receive promotions, when in the detective bureau, so I can't speak to what training they did or did not get in the academy. By Mr. Katanzaro, Q, did you review the letter that Mr. Tucker sent to various people? A, I have since I was terminated. I had never seen it before I was terminated. Q, you didn't know that it was made part of the Treehouse murder case. A, no. Q, on or about September 25th, 2019. A, not in the file I was given, sir. I never seen the letter until after I was terminated. Q, so when it indicates that it was made part of the court record on September 25th, you are not familiar with that? A, no, I was not. Q, okay. So you had not seen it until you were terminated. Is that right? A, correct. Q, now, one of the complaints in that letter, he complained about the investigation that was done by the Monroe County Sheriff's Office, correct? Mr. Mastro Marco, Jr., I'm going to object as to hearsay from your client. By Mr. Catanzaro, Q. It doesn't matter. I'm asking her, does she know that one of the complaints was the investigation conducted by the Monroe County Sheriff's Department? Mr. Mastro Marco, Jr., same objection. The witness, into the treehouse murder? Mr. Catanzaro, yeah. The witness, yes. By Mr. Catanzaro, Q, okay. And you were in charge of major crimes, correct? A, correct. Q, major crimes investigated that. Correct? A, correct. Q. And one of the complaints was failure to investigate and the protection of a homicide suspect in a theater play. You recall that? Mr. Mastro Marco, Jr. Well, again, I'm going to object as to what the letter that she claims she did not see. That was written by your client out of court, which is hearsay within hearsay within hearsay that you are bringing forth. So object to any questioning on this. Mr. Catanzaro, your speaking objections are not appropriate. Mr. Mastro Marco, Jr., I agree with you. I agree with you. But I'll keep quiet if you'll agree to grant me a continuing objection on, you know, what the letter says that was written by your client. Mr. Catanzaro, that's fine. Mr. Mastro Marco, Jr., all right. Mr. Catanzaro, you have it. The witness, I did not have. Mr. Mastro Marco, Jr., wait for a question. The witness, sorry, I was, repeat your question. Mr. Catanzaro, hold on. I'm going to mark this Exhibit 6. The Tucker letter was marked for identification as Defendant's Exhibit 6. By Mr. Catanzaro, Q, do you see it? A, I do. You don't need to make it any bigger. I can, there you are. Q, I'm making it smaller. A, okay. Q, do you see it? A, be careful, I have old eyes. Q, you see the whole thing? A, yes. <laughs> and so the first part of the letter says, in the subsequent investigation conducted by the Monroe County Sheriff's Department, do you have see that? <clears throat> the bottom first, A. Yes, I do. Q. Then he makes a complaint about failure to investigate and the protection of the homicide suspect, Anathea Clay, by the Maxo, right? A. I see that. Q. Okay. The illegal informant operation carried out by the Maxo inside the detention center, A. You read that correctly. Q. Okay. And the criminal misconduct of some Maxo officers has already been partially documented by the court. Did I read that correctly? A. You did. Q. Now, at that point he's talking about Monroe County Sheriff's Office, correct? A. Correct. Q. Does he mention your name at all at that point? A. No. Q. Okay. Now, he also goes on to talk about an unsatisfactory investigation, right? A. Yes. Q. And he talks about a number of things that all took place on the first night, correct? A. Correct. Q. And he makes a complaint. In number two, he specifically talks about a number of people including you, Matthew Pitcher, David Fernandez, David Smith and Danielle Malone. Is that right? A. That's correct. Q. And he talks about that they are all under the direction of Phelps and Pitcher, right? A. You read that correctly. Q. And, in fact, the Monroe County Sheriff's Office Major Crimes Unit is under your umbrella. Is that right? A. Right. But he's making the, no, the Major Crimes Unit is under my direction. Is there criminal misconduct? A. No. Q. So there was nothing to be under your direction then, right? A. But his letter says that I, those activities were under my direction. And I am telling you those activities were not under my direction. Q. Do you recall being in the room that was recorded and they were talking about Todd O'Quinn? A. Yes. Q. And you mentioned he was talking about an ID, right? Remember that? A. No, I don't. Q. You don't remember saying, Jesus Christ, if Todd, if he doesn't identify him, we are in trouble? A. Is that the date? Give me the date. Tell me what day you are talking about. Q. 
you, I don't have the date in front of me. I'm asking you, if on the recording you say, you show him a lineup or a photographic lineup to Todd O'Quinn and you say, Jesus Christ, if he doesn't identify him, we are all in trouble? Mr. Mastro Marco, Jr., I would object to the foundation at this point in light of what he's asking you. The witness, sir, I read the investigative summary and that comment is not in there and I don't have an independent recollection of saying that. By Mr. Catanzaro, Q, are you saying, is it possible that you would have said something like that? Mr. Mastro Marco, Jr., objection as to what's possible. The sky is falling, I don't know. The witness, I don't recall. Mr. Catanzaro, 